Hi guys, welcome to Tez Talks episode 19, the Q&A series 2. Yeah, it's funny, um, as life gets busier and busier, especially when you get married and, you know, you now have a significant other in your life and then you throw in babies and you know, stepchildren and um, life gets very hectic. Um, but I think it's about having your little tribe of girlfriends and you could... I, this is what I do is I always just make sure that if I haven't checked in with someone for a while, I'll send a message just saying, hey, thinking about you, I know everything's so busy, let me know whenever you get a spare moment, and then completely liberating yourself and them from the responsibility of having to connect. I have so many friends in my life who I rarely see, who are still my best, closest friends. Uh... And you know that when you see each other again, you just kind of pick up where you left off and there's a deep understanding. So it has to be this mutual understanding that life just happens and now you have work and you have kids and you have responsibilities and you have a husband. And also it's important to carve out some time. So for me, I know once a month I have my spiritual mama's group. My husband knows that I go there you know, I always have him take care of Bodhi or I have a sitter be with Bodhi and Isaac um, so I can go. So you can carve out time even if you say, all right, girls, we are all so busy. We have just got our lives going on. Let's say every second Wednesday of the month is our night to go out and have a red wine and connect and we know that we have that coming up. Like, make it a part of your schedule. So that's one one thing you can do. So it's just always there. Um, but then also, um, not putting any expectation on your friends to show up for you and to, if you need them, like you should be able to call them and check in with them. Um, but also, I'm such an understanding person, and I realize that we all are just doing our best, and we're trying to keep afloat and life is always so busy just the way things are these days in our society it's just so much stuff going on that i'm never relying on my friends to help emotionally regulate me i rely on the person that i um, am with all the time myself and then also my husband because anyone else in that kind of outer circle who you're not having day-to-day -day, um, connections with it's going to be very, very hard to be able to use them as a pillar of strength to help regulate you when you get down. So you have to reach within yourself. Um, or if it is integral for you to make that connection with that person, um, don't make it a um, something that's constantly coming up. Maybe every now and then when you really feel like you just need to have a check-in with one of your friends and they're so busy reach out and say, I know you're so busy. I know it's really hard for you right now. Um, I'm wondering if there's any space at all this week or next week for us to just connect and have a chat, even if it's for one hour. Um, I really need you in this way. And if you're not asking that of them on such a regular basis, I think any good friend would be able to carve out that special time for you. So, yeah, that, they're my suggestions. Um, and just, like, don't be hard on yourself. Just know that this is just a part of life. It's what happens as long as you have that mutual understanding and that agreement between you guys and you can be so open and communicated uh, really well, then you shouldn't run into any problems and continue to have... A beautiful friendship even if it looks a little bit different um, clearing your mind I think I think there's a misconception surrounding clearing your mind I don't know if it's actually possible to clear your mind um, but learning to relax is definitely one thing um, I always go back to meditation Deep breathing, 
finding your the spot in your house like this is my spot my zen zen um where where you can just put your feet up and read a book or smell some essential oils um have a lavender bath all the things that sound relaxing to you it's going to look different to you than it does to me but they're the things that make me feel relaxed but the clearing your mind is uh, almost impossible I think uh, it's more about observing your the patterns of your mind trying to keep your mind still uh, is one thing slowing it down being conscious I think a lot of the time if you focus on um, your body your physical body when you're lying down um, noticing where you hold tension or where there's stress or where there's aches and pains that can be really helpful uh, picturing a certain color sometimes a guided meditation is very helpful but uh, you have to liberate yourself from the pressure to clear your mind I've never in my life had a clear mind uh, I can sit and picture a color and then all of a sudden these little thoughts will come and infiltrate and I'll just kind of observe the thought and see where it goes and then move back into my color usually I use the color white and it's just a good practice uh, but it's also a great practice in not judging yourself for having thoughts and it's just the way our mind works it's how we are as human beings we have these big brains that are constantly going and ticking and thinking and analyzing and um, and so it's one thing to quieten the mind, but to completely clear it, I think, is uh, almost impossible. So just don't be harsh on yourself. Um, and take those moments to find whatever it is that relaxes you. <sighs> I'm, I'm like relaxed thinking about it right now. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Firstly, I just want to say I'm so sorry that you're having to navigate through something as challenging as an eating disorder. Um, there is something in that that um, you are going to be learning from and it's hard. It's a really hard thing to have to go through. I have never had an eating disorder per se, but I've had very unhealthy relationships with food um, being over militant with my food choices and I was very 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 skinny in 2009 and 2010 and um, I had an obsessiveness over uh, nutrient dense food and caloric intake and um, but I was still eating I was still eating a lot but I was just so hyper aware of every bite that went into my, every bite that I took of food. It was very unhealthy. Um, and, uh, but when you're in it, I get it, you're in it. You just are stuck in it and it is your reality. So the most important thing is, do you have a therapist or a doctor who is helping you navigate through some of these negative feelings that you're having surrounding your body image? I hope the answer is yes, because sometimes we need someone outside of ourselves to be a sounding board and to point out when we're having irrational thoughts. I needed someone else to tell me it's not normal how often you talk about food or how many times you change things on the menu and take oil out and ask the waiter how things are cooked and if you could cook it in coconut oil as opposed to olive oil and all those things that I was getting really funny about um, I was just kind of in it and I couldn't I didn't have that perspective until I had friends tell me it's not fun to go out with you anymore it's there's too much attention surrounding food uh, and that's when I took a step back and I, I had that perspective and I really lent on a therapist to pull me out of that place and um, I had a lot of healing in that area and the healing came from developing my spiritual self truly 
And I knew that, you know, a lot of the time, eating disorders are about control. If we feel out of control in some aspect in our lives, any aspect at all in our lives, um, then we want to control something. And so a lot of the time that control falls onto food and our diet. Uh, that's what it was for me. And once I started recognizing where it came from, I could actually address the root of the problem, which was my issue surrounding control. And then the more I did spiritual work and started learning about myself and self-development and meditation and cultivating self-love, like I just loved myself and my and the food followed. Like the food started, I started to become a lot healthier with my food choices. And, um, and the fixation left. Like I was fine to eat pizza now. I was fine to have ice cream. I was fine to have all these things that was so forbidden for me for so many years. Um, but it all came from like self-love and self-acceptance and and um, really getting beneath like where this control came from. And a lot of the time there has been some trauma in your life from ages zero to 17 where this is coming from, where it stemmed from. And so going over and processing that with someone, with a health professional, with a doctor, or a therapist or a psychologist is going to be beneficial because you can start to heal these patterns and these um, these emotions that you have surrounding any kind of trauma and it will give you insight as to why it's manifesting now in your life in this eating disorder. So find that person, that sounding board, someone who loves you and will show up for you um, as well as your health professional and then just delve into that spiritual work read those books the Eckhart Tolle the um, you know the Chris Carrs the Gabrielle Bernsteins the Alan Watts um, there are so many fantastic inspiring people and um, and you can learn to love yourself and accept yourself and once you're not thinking about food so much, that's when you know you're in a healthier place. So I wish you all the luck. Um, continue to have this kind of awareness to reach out in this way. I think it's a beautiful part of your healing journey. And I, um, yeah, and I, it resonates with me. I can connect with what you are going through. And, um, I appreciate you reaching out and I'm sending love. All right, guys, that is it. And I will see you next week. Okay, bye.